Hi, my name is Kurt Seidels, and on behalf of Maxford USA, it's my privilege to present to you my insights and tips based on my experience assembling and flying the prototype of Maxford USA's Bristol Fighter. The original F-2B Bristol Fighter first flew in September of 1916. That was right about the middle of World War I. It was a two-seater, able to carry up to 240 pounds of bombs. But the F-2B quickly earned its reputation and became known as the Bristol Fighter. It was fast and maneuverable enough to be flown as a single-seat fighter, more than able to hold its own against the opposing single-seat German fighters. The pilot's forward-firing 303-inch Vickers machine gun was its principal weapon. But the observer's 303-inch Lewis gun in the rear cockpit was its additional sting in the tail. Thank you for sharing my interest in this unusual and great flying model airplane. You're watching the first in a series of four brief videos covering some of what sets Maxford USA's F-2B Bristol Fighter apart from the more common models we see at the field or being advertised. In this video, we will be talking about its unique features and construction. Other videos in the series will cover the F-2B's landing gear, wing installation and alignment, radio setup, and flying. This ARF has a wingspan of 70 inches. Typical ready-to-fly weight is 12 to 14 pounds, depending on the customer's choice of power system. For the power system, you have a choice. You could use a gas or glow engine. A glow, say, in the range of a 120 size would be ideal. Or you could use an electric power system, um, that is a motor, electronic speed control, and LiPo batteries. For the prototype F2B, I chose an electric power system. The Uranus 638-109 brushless outrunner motor swinging an 18 by 8 wood prop with a 100 amp high voltage electronic speed control and that powered by either an 8S battery, two 4 cells in series, or a 10S LiPo flight battery. In my experience, this airplane flies very well with virtually any power system comfortably able to swing an 18 to a 20 inch propeller and I think it looks best with an electric power system. The F2B needs at least a four channel radio. And in terms of servos, it needs three standard size servos. That's two for the elevators and one for the rudder. And it needs your choice of either two, three, four, or five mini servos. That would be your choice of using all four ailerons plus a throttle would be five servos. But you also have the choice of either using just the top or the bottom ailerons, plus if you opt for it, a throttle, so it's either two, four, three, or five mini servos. By the way, I should clarify, there appears to be no true industry standard for what to call a servo. So when we say standard servo, we're talking about the likes of the high-tech HS311 analog servo, which is plenty of torque for this application, and is also being an analog servo draws relatively little current compared to so many of the digital servos on the market today. And for the mini servos, we're talking about the likes of the HS55, that uh, they fit beautifully up inside the wings seat for either two or four, or inside the nose for the throttle servo. I have test flown it both with just the two servos, uh, and it, it flew quite well. It could do nice looking rolls, all kinds of uh, comfortably all kinds of scale aerobatics. And then I tried it with all four servos active. And uh, with four ailerons, it's really great for dogfights. It's a much faster roll rate, but um, for scale flying, two ailerons are plenty. For the unused ailerons, you can simply use a little bit of scotch tape and tape the ailerons to the adjoining wing panel. If you want to get really fancy, you could order some mylar from our warehouse. We keep we don't really retail the Mylar, but we have some extra from each production run. And so you could actually cover over the unused aileron surface with, uh, with some Mylar. The olive drab on the top, the tan on the bottom. The wings are removable for transportation and storage. They easily come off as a left and a right pair by disconnecting the clevises that secure the wing panels to their center sections. Then disconnecting the aileron servo extensions and sliding the wing panels off their wing rods. 
The elevator servos, as you can see, are side mounted with pull-pull cables for great sport scale look. Like the original, the fuselage is suspended between the top and bottom wings. If you'd like to see the F-2B's maiden flight, go to Maxford USA's YouTube channel or on YouTube simply search for Maxford Bristol and you'll be able to see our Bristol F-2B in flight. The F-2B is shipped from the Maxford USA warehouse in Paramount, California. It arrives double boxed with all of the airframe components and supplied hardware packaged in plastic. Here's what's inside the box. Here you can see the F-2B in its inner carton box. Notice the various compartments isolated by cardboard, the various component parts wrapped in plastic, and here you can see the tail group, that is the horizontal stab, the two elevators, both the top and the bottom vertical stabs, and the rather large rudder. Here you can see the wing rods, they're aluminum tubes, and the exhaust stacks, which are made of fiberglass. Here you can see the main landing gear, that is the main wheels, and the main aluminum struts for the main landing gear. And here are the aluminum cabane and wing struts. Notice that the wing struts actually have a wooden skin that gives them a, a very realistic World War I appearance. And here you can see a pair of wing panels and center sections. There's an instruction manual printed in black and white in the box. And if you're interested, there's also an instruction manual in full color available for free to download as a PDF document or to view on screen from the Maxford USA website. From the Maxford USA main page, that is at www.maxfordusa.com, simply click on the F2B icon, and on the F2B's page, click on the hyperlink to the instruction manual, and you can either print or view on screen the full color version of the instructions. Thank you for watching this first video in the series. Thank you for your interest in the Maxford USA F2B. This completes video number one. In the next video, we will look at installation of the landing gear and wing installation and alignment. Happy landings.